just gone 6.46 now. I'm joined in studio by Ron Imming, co-founder of BookBuzz. Morning, Ron. Good morning, Ian. How are you? I'm pretty good. Now, the book this week is The Shift, The Future of Work is Already Here by Linda Gret. Now, this sounds very interesting. This is a... It, there's there's good news and there's bad news in this yes, book. Yes, it, it's a... It's a C is the author of another book called Hotspots. Now, if I knew that she was the author of that book, I would have never picked it up because that is a horrible, horrible, horrible book. <laughs> but this one is really interesting because it sort of takes... Because we, we talked a lot, a lot of books about technology, we've talked a lot of books uh, about uh, marketing, uh, where things are going, and this puts all those streams into a book that explains how all that all is going to impact on work. Now, it, it sort of, it takes two scenarios. One is a, is a very, very dark scenario of where the future is going and how does impact going to impact on our, what on our are they life. Predicting us? Say that again, what are they predicting? Or how, well, how bleak could it be? Uh, very bleak. So we're talking about fragmentation. And she, she tells the story. You're old, Ian. And so you remember uh, in the, the 90s how work was. So you would go into work at 9 o'clock. You would open up a few letters. And that would determine the rest of the day. Now there is this all persuasive internet emails. And you are working 24-7. Um, so there's an, an incredible amount of fragmentation going on. And through, st- through storytelling, she tells the story of individuals that are working in a very dark future, but they're basically locked up in a little box and work 24-7 to keep themselves uh, afloat. It talks about the sense of uh, I- uh, isolation. There is no more uh, family. Energy prices going up. You can't move because your carbon uh, quota isn't sufficient enough. It talks about uh, people sitting in front of a TV all the time, passive uh, leisure, sense of the matrix almost. It talks about constant crashes and bubbles all the time. So we think this is that far fetched. No, 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 but no, it doesn't. Uh, It talks about technology replacing jobs, 20, 30 percent unemployment. It talks about mass emigration between uh, the wealthy and the poor. It talks about. You being born in the United States or Europe is no longer a, a plus because you're competing with 5.7 billion uh, people in China and India. So hyper competition, very, very bleak. Then she takes the other perspective, which is the positive one, which is the bright side of the, the future, where she say that through technology development, there will be a multiplication of energy and abundance and people be allowed to f- freely travel and be uh, happy. So this whole sense of diversity, the ability to connect 5 billion people with each other, you can start solving very, very complex problems a lot easier. The generation Einstein, who is very different from uh, how we are, uh, balanced lives, much more ability to take choices of how you want uh, to work, because there's some interesting research. Once you're over 50,000 income, more money doesn't make you more happy. Now, the dark side talks about being people being fundamentally unhappy all the time. It talks about micro-entrepreneurship as a way of living. And it talks about, which is very interesting, because we're going to live longer. So your career is going to span 50, 50 60 years. The normal career would be sort of a bell curve. But now we're going to have four or five bell curves in one career. So you can shift your careers several times. So who wins and who loses out of all this? Okay, the good thing about this book is that it sort of helps you to prepare what to do. People who work on their uh, de- their own development from an and she talks about capital, intellectual capital, social capital, and emotional capital. If you become an expert, which is ten thousand hours of uh, preparation and uh, learning, if you build a good social network, if you uh, become a connector. And if you develop a posse of people that you surround you, about 12 people that help you, you be prepared. If you don't, you be one of those people living in a box. And does she come down on either side of the argument in the end, whether we have a bright future or a, or a dark one? She's an optimist, so I think she's more into the uh, into the bright uh, the bright future. And if you read a few of the other books, uh, there's probably more. I think uh, there's a book called uh, Future Babel by Gardner. Every doom and gloom merchant that has has sort of predicted the future of doom and gloom has been proven wrong. So it's probably going to be on the bright side. And what do you, what do you think? Is, it, is she painting too bleak a picture on the, on the, on the, on the dark no, side? No, she, she, she sort of, she, listen, you need to be aware of how dark it could be. 
at the end of the book, she writes a note for politicians. And every politician should pick up this book and just read the last, last two pages of the book. And if they listen, we be okay. Well, that's The Shift by Linda Gratton. Ron Emick of BookBuzz, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Now, it's pretty dark on the markets at the moment. Chris Curran of Delta Index is with us in the studio. Morning, Chris. Good morning, Ian. Uh, we've, ha- we've had a bit of a, a bit of a small, small, small losses overnight. Not too much, but obviously yeah. the big today is the big day. Well, so obviously, I'm very uh, terrified of being uh, after some doom and gloom after that. But... Um, yeah, we had um, you know a pretty flat day yesterday. Everything was down slightly, maybe half to one percent, um, and pr- very little action overnight. I think everything is really seized up at the moment ahead of the ECB rate decision today, which we'll come to in a moment. Uh, big news yesterday, I think, was the OPEC uh, rate decision, which I would describe as uh, collapse the the OPEC meeting collapsing in disarray. If you could uh, describe OPEC as being uh, arrayed in the first place. But I think what you're really seeing here is the result of the Arab Spring feeding through into oil prices where um, most of the members of OPEC now need cash. They want the oil price to stay high. They were expected to increase production and therefore um, to ease up on the oil price. Uh, that, that didn't happen, and therefore you had oil spiked by $2.50 on both the Brent contract and the West Texas Intermediate contract, or US Light Crude, as they call it. Um, it came off a bit again, but still closed up. Mm-hmm. The two big, what, two big decisions, decisions today are the interest rate decision, and also you know, it, people are expecting to be left on hold at 1.25%, but obviously the comments on Triche are absolutely vital, both on interest rates, and what's he going to say on this Greek uh, possible debt restructuring and second bailout? Yeah, well, I think the, the language in that seems to change quite significantly. I think that you're, you're, the there's a very open discussion about reprofiling, or as they call it, which is, you know, effectively some kind of managed restructuring or, or changing of maturity. We can't even use the fault now, can we? No, no. The-